And today, as we celebrate the reopening and the resilience, we also celebrate their lives. And also that this is a turning point for our community to move forward. Boulder is taking another step towards healing nearly one year after 10 people were killed inside the Table Mesa King Superstore. That store opened for business today for the first time in 11 months. Honoring the victims was a central part of this morning's ceremony. We have been forever changed by the violence of that day, and so important that we began this ceremony with a moment of silence for each of the victims. They will never be forgotten. And we will never forget the victims. And the store reopening is one way the community is moving forward and looking to the future. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is live at that store where some customers have made that decision to come back today. Russell. Yeah, Jason, the parking lot has been packed all day long, so the customers have come back. And frankly, some of those store employees who were working at the time of the shooting have come back as well. They say it's time. They've waited 11 months for this moment. As one customer put it earlier today, yeah. this isn't just a grocery store, it's a gathering yeah. place in yeah. this community. And today, as we celebrate against the backdrop of the Boulder Flatirons, it's very touching to see everybody here. An emotional reopening for a community still grieving. I'm still crying, mm. very emotional. I got flowers and I put them against the wall there. And yet, despite that lingering grief, there's an even stronger spirit of resilience. Absolutely. My heart is full and everybody here, we're all a family. The energy is so positive. This town certainly showed up today. There are tons of people. The completely remodeled store packed with customers, supporters and colleagues from other King Super stores. I said I would be here for this grand opening to let them know that we're 100% behind them. We pick up and we persevere. I love the feeling. It feels much more open. And while they did come for groceries. I bought blueberries. I bought some potato chips. Flowers, prosciutto. Milk, prunes. I'm 81. <laughs> Sliced cheese, bananas. They mainly came for community. And see some old friends and make new ones. This is where we gather together with a lot of our friends all the time. We're finally coming together and we have our new place. We can shop and meet each other again. I mean, it's wonderful. We couldn't wait. Coming up at 6, we'll talk to one of those employees who was inside this store at the time of the shooting. He was in the produce department. He escaped out the back with some of his colleagues and many of the customers who were inside the store at the time. He said it's therapeutic to come back today. In fact, he's working the night shift as we speak. He says it's time to take back this store. We're live in Boulder, Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Yeah, Boulder strong. All right, Russell, thank you. And one of the victims in the shooting was Terry Liker. She was a clerk at the store and was just 30 minutes from ending her shift when she was killed. And her story is living on through a scholarship at CU Boulder. Terry's mom said Terry loved animals. She loved the CU buffs. At age three, she was diagnosed with cognitive disabilities. Of course, that never stopped her. A music scholarship in Terry's name is already helping students at CU. It's just an amazing way to be able to uh, remember Terry um, and also find students that are deserving and find students that are um, you know, embody the, the, the legacy that, that Terry had of, of school spirit and graciousness. The Terry Liker Marching Band Scholarship is helping two students this year. Of course, more donations are always welcome. Boulder Police Officer Eric Talley was the first officer on scene that day. He was killed protecting others and saving countless lives. His name has been added to Boulder's police memorial. He's now the seventh officer in Boulder to be killed in the line of duty. Friends said he was a kind and funny man who loved board games. He was a big supporter of Special Olympics and participated in multiple torch runs. Above all, he loved his family, including his seven children. We also want to remember the eight other people killed in the shooting. You can find stories from their family and friends on our website, thedenverchannel.com and on the Denver 7 Plus app. 
Flowers, mementos, messages covered the outside of the store in the days after the shooting. And items were out there for two and a half months, and now they will be on display at the Museum of Boulder. We had to, you know, sort of remind ourselves, and that was a thing we heard from other museums as well, is it's a memorial first. And so even as we're looking at this through sort of that like historical curatorial lens, um, it's really important that this is, that it was allowed to people, to be there for people to come and um, look at it and heal and reflect and bring their, you know, contributions. The Boulder Strong display opens a week from Friday. Museum staff say you'll be able to see some of the items left behind at the memorial, as well as pictures taken by photographers. And you can find all of our coverage on the King Super Shooting, including today's ceremony, on the DenverChannel.com and on our free Denver 7 Plus app. We'll also have more coming up on Denver 7 News at 6.